So, first step is we gotta get a two inch ball put on the tractor to pull the sprayer with. We'll get the sprayer hooked up. I'll do a flush because this is a shared unit. This comes from the local NRCS office. I don't actually have a sprayer. I usually use a four wheeler, the four wheelers at dad's. So rather than him having to bring the four wheeler all the way here, since I do have a smaller tractor now, I will be using the, the little tractor. Got the ball, got my wrench and my pipe wrench. There you have it, ready to roll. Maybe. Well, the tractor starts still, and the seat's wet. It'll be all right though. Just a little bit of water never hurt nobody. Unless they drowned in it, then, you know, that's a different story. Yeah. out for is turning the boom on the canopy. Uh, right now I'm going to pull the sprayer over to the shop, put some air in the tires. Tires are all good and just check all my sprays. A little bit of frustration here. Uh, this is probably the worst I've ever seen it. Every single nozzle on this sprayer is plugged. Every single one. Now that doesn't mean that nothing's coming out. It's dribbling out or it's spraying a funky pattern. And I just opened up the first one. I want you to look at this. All this came out of one nozzle. Look at this. You know what that is? That's the seal whenever you unscrew the top off a chemical container. That's the seal you peel off. Someone didn't peel it off. Someone dropped all the pieces in the tank. I don't know. But we're going to see how much more of this stuff I dig out of here. I will have a sprayer, my own sprayer, one day. All right, just open up the third one. I don't know if you can see in there. Those pieces there just came out of there. Not everyone has equal intelligence. Just saying. All right, I've gone through and taken all the nozzles off. I cleaned all the nozzles out. I've left the nozzles off. I'm gonna fire the pump up and just let it spray out without the nozzles on, let it flush the lines as much as we can. I am gonna redrain this tank. There was way more chemical in there than I thought there was. Whoever had this before me was a complete idiot. If you're watching this, I'm sorry. I don't really know who you are, but you're an idiot. So there's that. Sometimes the truth hurts. Bad news is the sprayer sucks. I haven't got anything sprayed today and it needs to be sprayed ASAP. Uh, the good news is my lime's here. We got two loads right here. Uh, they're gonna have to go back and get two more loads. But the good news is they're gonna get all four loads today. Uh, they did not know if they'd be able to get all of it today. Putting three tons of the acre. Technically the soil test company said I didn't need any lime, but my pH is creeping down a little bit. Uh, my base saturation is pretty decent. It's lowest back here on the bigger field but I'm gonna go ahead and put three tons on everything because uh, I like to put it on when I'm working ground so I can work it in instead of just having it lay on top of the ground. So hopefully I won't be doing this for another four or five years. By that time, it'll definitely need some, so I'd rather go ahead and get some on now to prevent the need than wait until I need it. I was going to cut this it's not too bad. There's a decent amount of alfalfa. There's some crabgrass coming up. It would make good hay. And actually, there's a decent amount of it, really. Uh, but I'm running really low on time. And I just, I, I'm wanting to spray it before I plant it. And I can't, it's going to set me back three, four days at least. And I need to be, I need to get the spray on it as soon as possible. So we're just going to till it in and it's going to add some, some fertilizer to the soil. For those of you that have never seen lime spread, no, we're not in California. That's not smoke. That's lime dust is what that is. Oh, 
I lost him. He's gone. Okay, we're gonna roll the windows up here. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can tell right where it spread to. See the lime on the grass out here. We'll see how the other one's doing up in the other field. Won't take them long to spread some, cover some ground. I have trouble getting people to spread lime here because there's not really anybody that spreads lime around here. So people have to come in from out of the area and you gotta have like a minimum of 500 or 1,000 tons of lime to spread, which there's no way I'll ever have that. This place here has road trucks. Most, most lime spreaders are off-road, have the giant tires, interrogator type stuff. These are road trucks with lime boxes on them. So if it's not worked ground, like hay ground and patch ground, it's perfect for because it's good and solid. You don't have to worry about it getting stuck or none of that stuff. So uh, I make sure and try to get the lime on before I work it or they won't come and spread it. And, uh, and then I really can't, I can't find nobody else that'll do it. But since they have road trucks, they just haul loads of lime in the truck and spread it 15 tons at a time. I'm really happy they were able to get to me. And uh, let's get this stupid sprayer working so I can get some spraying done too. All right, I just stopped again. They are spraying way better. Still got some stuff. I just pulled this here out of the end. This is all the stuff I pulled out the first time around. That there, most of these these chunks here, that's all that seal from that container. I don't know what kind of idiot did that, but I'm extremely frustrated right now. I should already be done, at least done with one tank full, if not done done or at least almost done with my second tank i think i can do this in two tanks as long as i can get the speed on the tractor right all right we're looking a lot better thank goodness all right we're sitting pretty good you see i'm draining the tank right now just to flush as much as that whatever was in there i don't know what was in there flush that out uh, once that drains down we'll start filling water again uh, I will, I'm gonna go through and just check the nozzles one last time while it's filling. Uh, while this is draining, I'm gonna go ahead and get my chemical brought out here so we can be ready to put it in once we get that drained out. All right guys, sorry, you guys missed out on a little bit. My phone is eating battery up like crazy nowadays. Anyways, so everything is flushed. Got all the chemical in, I'm just topping it off. And then I was getting ready to start up and let it agitate and hit the road uh however update on ginger the three-legged hay helper uh we had to take her back to the vet uh her wound on the outside is looking really good but she has some internal damage uh basically it just looks like she's got a big old knot inside of her gut i think it's a we think it's a hernia she took her in this morning for a surgery and then my wife is getting ready to leave to go pick her up so once i top this off 
I'm gonna go on in, grab a bite to eat, watch the kids while my wife is gone. Whenever she gets back, I'm gonna come out here and we're gonna spray. spray. So I need to be done with this spraying by hopefully three, because I'm gonna take a, t a wheel off the cola packer to town, get a new tire put on it, get back here. Hopefully dad can take the cola packer with him this evening. He's coming over here with, with the disc. I was hoping to get some fertilizer put on today. That's probably not gonna happen. Hopefully I'll have fertilizer on tomorrow. And uh, while I'm in town getting uh, the tire, I also determined what the electrical problem was on the tractor. It is a relay, so hopefully I can get a relay while I'm in town. And assuming I can get that, I'm gonna get the tractor out, check everything out, and we're gonna hook it up to the ripper. And you guys are gonna have to see some deep ripping. We'll see, time will tell. But today we gotta get the spraying done. And uh, probably another hour or so, they'll be back with two more loads of lime and they'll be done. So exciting stuff, exciting stuff. The kids are in bed. So I'm out here at the sprayer. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. Let it be agitating a little bit. See if this puppy will start. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Almost. All right, guys, we're gonna head out. Ginger is back and feeling pretty good. We're just having surgery. So here is the first wound. Should be getting stitches taken out anytime, really. This is a drain tube that they put in with the drain wound. Basically, this entire flap of skin here was just peeled back like she'd been skinned. And she had, we haven't talked to the vet yet. He was out, you know, we haven't picked her up, so we gotta call him and see what he found. But uh, he had to open her up. She basically, we know it was swelling, but I think she had a rupture in her abdomen here. She just had a big old bulge right here. I think maybe probably she had like a hernia where her intestines were kind of where they shouldn't be just from the, the impact. But she seems to be feeling pretty good, all things considered. I think, I need to go back and look, but I think it's been a week since she was hit. Been agitating for about five minutes now. She's gonna agitate on our way back. She's gonna agitate while we're spraying. Should be sitting pretty good. Real quick, I wanna go over what I got here. So this is actually a four-wheeler sprayer. It's got the, the controls mounted on a, a two by four. And then basically what I usually do is I'll strap another board to the four-wheeler rack and I'll take a couple screws and I'll screw this down to that. Uh, obviously I can't do that on this tractor and I don't wanna modify anything permanently so I just took a strap and I strapped it to the roll bar here so uh, what we got is this is our markers so sofa left right and off so that'd be right on left on and then the middle is off and here these are all just toggle switches on and off so this would be right boom left boom and then master so generally these always stay on and you just turn this one off now, if I'm, if I'm spraying, let's say I got this on, I'm spraying, I'm coming to a point, and I want to turn the, the, uh, the right boom off, and keep spraying with the left boom, this would be on. Then I get to the end, and I go ahead and flip this off, and flip this one back on, and be ready to go. So, I don't usually do that, even if I have a point, I'll just go ahead. Because for, for no more what I'm spraying, it's not worth it getting confused on the switches and it's not that it's confusing but whenever you're running eight nine ten miles an hour through the field things are happening pretty quick it kills me to do it but that's a pretty good course cutting on this field really Whew, that's close guys she started sputtering I got up here Pretty low on fuel. Never even thought to check it, just because this thing hardly uses any. Fuel gauge doesn't work. So, get about half this tank sprayed out and had to run back to the house. Luckily, I made it without having to haul cans of fuel and having to prime it. That'd be a disaster. So, we're gonna top her off. Get 
most of that, but probably not all of it done with this load. Then I'll get a little bit more. I want to have a full load. And I'll finish this back here and that other field. Alright guys, this is my first tank at the higher rate or at the higher speed and basically this knob right here I got from about right in there over to the ditch left but not all the way back obviously I'm leaving that big ridge back there I say big ridge why do you think that's funny I don't really think that's a big ridge but it's the ridge the biggest ridge of the field it's kind of a knob and then the ridge but probably just an acre left to spray back here and this front field will be done however it's getting late in the day my great uncle came and paid me a visit so that was good uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the house we're gonna fill this thing with water so it'll be ready whenever I get back from taking the tire and possibly getting a, a relay then uh, I'll, I'll just put the chemical in and we'll finish spraying and we'll be done. Alright guys, I just got back. Never, never gonna believe. Can't, can't imagine we were ever doing this. I got started to the tire place. Called. Hey, uh, do you have a question on some sensors? It's like, no. Oh, well, what were you wanting? I was like, oh, I'm headed your way to get a tire put on. You said you had a tire there for me. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me call you back a second. Call me back. Hey, uh, had a guy come in and get four of those tires today. I don't have your tire. Okay. He said, I'll have your tire in the morning. So, I just went and got the, salt, the relay from my tractor. Didn't get the tire. I didn't get too far down the road, so it's not a super big deal. It's just a pain in the butt that... Like, if, it ha if he hadn't happened to call, he called and I missed his call, so I called him right back. But, I mean, if it didn't happen right then, I would have got there and like, oh yeah, we don't have your tire. So, what a pain. Anyways, we gotta get this last load on before it gets too much later. All right, we just finished the backfield. I did my end and one trick down on the front field here. We're gonna finish it up. Looking pretty good on spray. So we'll do this, and then I got basically one round there at the house along the road. I'm gonna work it up and plan in as well. Just finished spraying. Got a little bit left in the tank. I'll probably drain some of that in some jugs. And, uh, oh, tomorrow before I unhook it, I'll probably take it back in the field and spray the rest of it out. But right now, we're gonna get this new relay, put it on the, the big tractor. All right, here's the relays. Uh, this is the old one. Uh, if you look at this, you can see where it's gotten hot. Right here, it's kind of melted that stuff away, and then this thing is super loose. I noticed that whenever I went to unscrew this to do some testing on it, the whole bolt turned. I was like, well, that can't be right. All right. New solenoid installed, uh, or relay, whatever you want to say. But there are three relays here. You'll see one, two, three. And this relay over here is for the manifold heater. This relay here is your start relay, and this relay here is the cab accessory relay. So everything um, on the right console and up at the top, so the radio, uh, any cab lights you got, the blower, all that stuff runs off of this one here. Everything else runs off the, all the gauges stuff run off the ignition. Uh, and <clears throat> if you don't know how a relay works, basically, um, a relay is just a switch that's operated by voltage. So anytime you have 
a large amp draw that you want to switch on and off, you would use one of these. And so you might you use a little switch to switch your low voltage, which is your control voltage, or same voltage in this instance. It could be low voltage or whatever. But in this instance, it's, it's, it's the same voltage, but it's low amperage. Okay, so you can have a cheap switch it's like a five amp switch or something, or even less. And you can switch, you know, say 30 amps, instead of having to have a 30 amp switch to send all your power through. So this is your signal wire, you put voltage on this, it's gonna close a, a, a coil, a magnetic coil, which closes a switch, sends power from here. This is hot right here, this has 12 volts on it. And this has nothing until this has 12 volts, and then this is just a switch that's closed. Then this sends voltage out to your cab. So we're going to flip this switch on. Uh, you got to be careful because there's hot here and there's hot on the switch. But uh, I'm going to flip that switch on and we're going to see if my radio or my blower fan or any of that stuff works. So, moment of truth. Radio works. Blower doesn't work. Okay. Ah, I know it's not cold air, but at least it's air moving. Much gooder. Success. The electrical issue is fixed. Thank goodness. And I, and I don't have a short. I'm pretty sure it was literally just that solenoid failed. Bam. Bam. Put this panel on over here. And uh, next thing I'm going to work on on this tractor is the air conditioning. Ta-da! All right, we're going to go ahead and unhook the baler. Ah, that's pretty easy. All right, we're going to hook the ripper up. You may be saying, geez, why has he got the mask on? Well, I'm getting ready to find out. You ever... Uh, part of the books of, uh, Where's Waldo? We're gonna play a little game. And instead of Waldo, it's the Ripper. Where's the Ripper? It's someplace out here. I don't know if you see it. You got a really good eye. You might have seen it. It is right here. Now don't be lying, I know you can't see it, because I can't see it, and I'm here in person. So, those are called weeds. I am extremely allergic to weeds, hence the mask. Now, it won't fix everything, but it'll at least make it somewhat bearable. And I'll just be miserable for, you know, a month or two instead of the six months or so. Oh my gosh. Hey, look. I backed right up to it. I don't know if you see it. Here's the center shank right here. Duh. All right. Got the ripper hooked up. We'll look at this when we got some daylight. Getting ready to make the old girl grunt. That ripper is actually probably the hardest thing we, I have to pull. Well, maybe not the hardest. I, I got a I got a 13 shank rip, uh, chisel plow, and if you sock it in the ground, it'll stop that tractor in its tracks. I'm talking. You just go down and don't have any donuts on, or don't stop it. It'll literally throw you, just about throw you through the glass front windshield in the cab. All right, guys, I'm going in. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, yep, yeah, it's going clear. Not by too much, but just enough. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to actually get the tire for the Cola Packer, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I'll get that, both those tires put back on it. I'll get it in transport mode. It'll be ready to go. 
Dad will bring the disc over. He'll probably take that back with him. Uh, we'll fix the flap on the drill, get it up, locked up, ready to go. And uh, really, as far as me starting to work ground, it's just a waiting game now. I'm going to wait for this stuff to, to get a good kill on it. And then I'll start ripping. Ripping is going to be the first thing I do. Well, I'm going to spread fertilizer first so it's nice and smooth. And then I'm going to rip. Then we're going to hit it with the disc several times. I don't think I'm going to have to chisel plow. So I probably won't chisel plow. It'll just be a rip. And that'll be it. All right, guys. Bring the candy forge out.